Hi, Rodney from iComply here, and today we're going to talk about uh, the perception that Australians will pick up the slack to get out there and do the farm work. I mean, that's... <laughs> Sorry, I, I shouldn't laugh, but uh, it's actually laughable. The reason why it's laughable is, you know, it's pretty hard for us as farmers to compete with a job where they get paid for sitting at home doing nothing. Um, we experience that from job keeper, job seeker. I mean, my my eye comply office is just around the corner from the Caboolture Centre Link, and uh, I get on average five to six Aussies coming in here a day, not looking for work, looking for me to sign a form for them so that they can continue to get their unemployment benefits. So. Um, I think from our perspective, you know, I've heard all the arguments. Um, I was sitting down with uh, quite a prominent politician not long ago and he said, you know, Rod, if farmers would get rid of peace rates and would pay a good hourly rate, he said, uh, the Aussies would go out there and do the work. Would they? Because we've tried it. We've tried it. In the middle of this labour crisis this year, and I'm going to tell you guys a story of what happened. Um, you know, with my brother's company. My brother runs a company called Queensland Farm Management and Training. It's one of the largest labour hire companies up here in Queensland. And in February this year, uh, planting season was due to start in Cavulture. Uh, the planting of strawberries over a six week period, it's pretty intense. Um, we can plant about 10, 12 million strawberry plants over a six week period. Um, we needed, my brother needed about 120 workers for planting season this year. and. Uh, 10 days before planting started, um, he had none, nada, zero. Usually we would get a lot of the Koreans, Japanese, the backpackers that would get off the plane and want to do their 88 days straight away, okay? So they'd come and do the strawberry planting. They had in their mindset, they'd get off the plane, smash out their 88 days, and then go off and spend their two years in a city somewhere, surfing at the Gold Coast, enjoying themselves. We didn't have those people this year. The workers that were working on our farms over winter were all working down south in the same crops over summer. So we didn't have their workers. So I sat down with my brother and I said, you know what we're gonna have to do, mate? We're gonna have to train Aussies. So we're gonna have to train Aussies. We're in the middle of Caboolture. We're in the middle of one of the highest unemployment areas. I think Caboolture was number two or number three on the job seeker um, list. Australia-wide, I'm not talking Queensland, I'm talking Australia. We're number three. So there's plenty of people looking for a job here. Okay, you've only got to go down to Morrifield Shopping Centre to the food court at lunchtime. You can't even get a seat. People that are unemployed. So I said, we've got the workforce here. We're going to have to train Aussies. So I went out to the farmers and I said, look guys, first thing we need to do is change the perception. We're going to change the perception of farm work. Because Aussies think two things. First, they think you as a farmer only want to hire backpackers. Second is you don't want to pay a fair rate, you want to screw them on peace rates. They're the two things that Aussies thought. So I said, okay, we're going to change the perception. We're going to pay a good hourly rate. Okay, we'll pay two, three dollars above the award wage. Then we'll get the Aussies. So I sat down with the farmers and I said, look guys, I said, this is what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to pay $26 an hour, $27 an hour. The farmer said, look Rod, problem we got is the ones that are coming back. He said, they earn $35, $36 an hour on peace rate. They won't come back for 27 So we've got to do peace rates. So I said, okay, if we're going to do peace rates, we're going to do a that red hot rate that anybody can make hourly. So over the years in strawberry planting, the average rate was $35 a thousand. So for a thousand plants planted, you got paid 35 So the farmer said to me, what are we going to pay, 40 50? I said 70. If we're going to have a go, we're going to double it. So we went to $70 a thousand. The other thing about Caboolture is if you walk down the main street, you'll see that every second shop is a job active. You know, help employment, max employment, this employment, that employment. Every second one is an employment office. Why? There's so much unemployment here. So I figured if I went to all of those employment agencies, and I think I counted 16 of them, if they gave me 10 workers each, that'd be 160 workers. Boom, problem solved. We'll get the Aussies to do the work, we'll pay them really well, and we'll get them to do the work. So armed with a $70 piece rate, double what it's ever been, armed with us giving Australians an undertaking that we're gonna train them properly, 
my brother's company, Queensland Farm Management and Training, as a reputation of training and micromanaging training. Armed with all that information, we hit social media, we went out, we found, and we found 120 people. Of those 120 people, okay, we had 90 Australians. 90 Australians and 30 backpackers that worked for us last year that heard about the ridiculous rate and got in the car and drove through the night to get a piece of the action. So the first day we had 90, we started training. Second day we had seven. Okay, we lost 20 of the Aussies, which is understandable, you know. Strawberry planting is not easy, you're bending over, it's hard on your back, and farming's not for everyone. You know, march in, in the sunny coast, it's quite humid, it's hot, okay. Um, we lost 20, we thought, well, it is what it is. Next day, we got to work, there was 50. So we've lost 50 Aussies. Okay, by the end of the week, we had 15 Aussies left. So we'd lost 70. Now, I couldn't work out why. I knew at $70 a thousand, they'd be making good money. That was a given. But I went back to the office, I double checked the data, I analyzed the data, and every single person was making an award wage based on that rate. So why weren't they coming back? It wasn't because it was peace rates. It wasn't because they couldn't make money. They weren't coming back because they didn't want to. Farming wasn't for them. Farm work is not for them. And that's why, you know, regardless of paying a piece rate or paying an hourly wage, trying to get Australians to do the work, the reason why we're failing is not because us as a horticultural industry don't want Australians, which is what the perception is. I mean, if you look at a farmer, a farmer would rather an Australian that is living here rather than a backpacker that comes, does their 88 days, and he's got to retrain someone every time. A farmer would much rather train an Australian knowing that he's gonna be here. Because I'll tell you something about farmers, they have a lot of things, but the one thing they don't have is time. And it takes time to train people. Farmers are all time poor. They haven't got the time to train someone. So if they're gonna invest that precious thing that is time, They'd rather invest it into an Australian that they know is going to stick on the farm. The simple fact of the matter is, Australians don't want to do the work. And that's why, at the moment, with this labour crisis, we need this ag visa. We need this ag visa more than anything. Because everybody's looking at a solution, and every solution they're looking at is just not tangible. The solution of bringing in backpackers bought us a shot we can't. The solution of training Australians, well, we've tried, they don't want to do it. So what are the solutions? The solutions not to train Australians. The reason why the Ag Visa, I believe, will be a success is because the people that are coming from those countries are born and bred on the land. Unfortunately, when we're born now with technology, what does a parent do with a child to shut them up, they put an iPad in front of them. And Australians grow up watching an iPad playing a PlayStation. Let me tell you something, in these third world countries like Vietnam, Cambodia, all these areas, there ain't no iPads as a kid. As soon as you can walk, you're in the rice paddy. These kids have been instilled. Work on a farm is a way of life. They don't know any other way of life. As soon as they can walk, they can pick. So they're born and bred on the farm. They understand the culture of working on a farm. Let's bring them in. That's my take on uh, why training Aussies won't work. Simple fact of the matter is, it won't work because Australians just don't want to do the work. If you like what I've had to say, uh, like, share and subscribe. Thank you.